look at some specific cases for ideal gases. So we're talking about ideal gases. And what I want to do is consider, uh, so if we have an internally reversible process, and let's say that it's also adiabatic, so internally reversible and adiabatic for an ideal gas. This means that it's isentropic, so S1 is equal to S2. And so what we can do, let's go back to this equation, so S2. So let's go back to the equation where, we're where we can calculate the change in entropy for an ideal gas. This is equal to C sub V natural log T2 over T1 plus R natural log V2 over V1. Also, one thing I want to point out real quick is that one, so this, this it works for, like this is valid for both a closed system and an open system. So if we're talking about a closed system, then the one and two represent state one and state two. If we're talking about an open system, then one and two represent the inlet and the outlet. We know that, so if we have an ideal gas that's internally reversible and adiabatic, then we know that S2 minus S1 is equal to zero. So then this is equal to C sub V natural log T2 over T1 plus R natural log V2 over V1. What we can do is rearrange this equation. Natural log of T2 over T1 is equal to minus R over C sub V natural log V2 over V1. So all I've done is moved the C sub V natural log T2 over T1 to the other side, and then I divided through the C sub V. So now what I want to do is rewrite this as, like, so knowing this relationship, so this is just from algebra, so natural log x to the y is equal to y natural log of x. So um, we can rewrite this equation, so natural log t2 over t1 is equal to the natural log of v2 over v1 minus r over c sub v. And then I want to get rid of the negative sign, so I'm going to invert that. So natural log t2 over t1 is equal to natural log v1 over v2 and then r over c sub v. So now let's go ahead and raise both sides to the e, so because we know that, so the E natural log of X is equal to X. So if we do that, we get that T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2 to R over C sub V. And then what we can do, I'm going to say that, so, so we know that like, so R is equal to C sub P minus C sub V. So this is just the gas constant. It's equal to C sub P minus C sub V. So what we can do is replace R in this equation with C sub P minus C sub V. So if we do that, we get T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over, and this should be V2, C sub P minus C sub V over C sub V. Well, and then we also know that K is equal to C sub P over C sub V. So then T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2 to K minus 1. So this is called, is one, re, one relationship for an isentropic process that's an ideal gas. So this is called the first isentropic relation. And so this is, uh, this is basically a relationship for an ideal, well, an ideal gas that follows 
an isentropic process. All right, so we can do kind of a similar thing to get a second equation. So what I'm going to do is start with the other equation for, uh, for calculating the change in entropy. So S2 minus S1 is equal to C sub P natural log T2 over T1 minus R natural log P2 over P1. And if this is isentropic, then it's equal to zero. So we're assuming that this is isentropic. In other words, S2 is equal to S1. So that means that this equation is equal to zero. So then we can rearrange this. I'm just going to move the R natural log P2 over P1 to the other side. So C sub P natural log T2 over T1 is equal to R natural log P2 over P1. And then what I'm going to do is divide both sides by C sub P. So then you get natural log T2 over T1 is equal to R over C sub P natural log P2 over P1. Rearrange, so natural log T2 over T1 is equal to natural log P2 over P1, and then this is just R over C sub P. So now what I want to do is raise both sides to E, E, and really what I'm doing here is natural log T2 over T1 is equal to natural log P2 over P1 to the R over C sub P. So then if we do this, we get that T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 R over C sub P. And then knowing that, first of all, R is equal to C sub P minus C sub V, and K is equal to C sub P over C sub V, then this equation can be written as T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 to K minus 1 over K. This is called the second isentropic relation. And then what we can do, we can get a third isentropic relation by basically plugging the second into the first. So this is the second and the first. So if we plug the second into the first, so plug second isentropic relation into first isentropic relation, we can get a third isentropic relation of P2 over P1 is equal to V1 over V2 to the K. This is called the third isentropic relation.